Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where you will be informed, encouraged, and empowered to embrace your dreams and advance in life through authorship. I am your host, best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, and certified leadership trainer, Dom Brightman. Be sure to check out the goods and services from every guest, as well as the host himself, yours truly. Now let the fun begin. Today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, it's the Going North podcast, that we got one heck of a guest for you today, folks, because my goodness, we got somebody who was on that field, y'all, that football field, that is, because my man right here, born in Fulton County, Georgia, to some wonderful Native American parents, y'all, that's right, some wonderful Native American parents, and he attended Stetson University, and for nine years, he played football, y'all, that's right, he played football for nine whole years at high school and college level and not just at the college level division one i hear so that's right number one y'all and to make it even better and not butter he even got his bachelor's degree in communication and he also fell into writing after a certain traumatic experience that happened in the land of china that's right back in 2018 so let's give it up for the one the only the CJ himself. No, not from San Andreas, but from Georgia himself. Chancellor Jax. Now you doing today, CJ man. <laughs> hey, man. This is not from San Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> Come only on, I know somebody know. said that at least once yeah. to you, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll go through location of reference. But uh now nah, what's going on, man? Blessings and balance to you. Blessings and balance to everyone that's tuning in right now. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm appreciative. Oh, yeah, man. Appreciate the fact that you're back in the good state of America, baby. That's right. I made it back to America, man. My man spent 14 days in a Beijing prison, wrote a book about it, wrote a romance novel about chronicles about happening before and somewhat during and after about it and got more stuff cooking, man. So I forgot to have the fellow melanated brothers on the podcast to speak about the <laughs> <liberated> <laughs> ways. <laughs> hey, man. So, man, it's a lot going on, man. So like I said, I'm just grateful to be able to showcase what I got going on and you know what I mean, just tap in with the people and share who I am more and people get to learn me. That's right, tapping in like he's tapping from behind, y'all. So my goodness, that's all introductions, you know, they're not allowed to be 75 days long. So mind filling in anything I missed about you, my man? I mean, yeah, like you said, um, played football nine years. Went to Sessa University, got my bachelor's degree in communication and media studies, landed my first job in China after I graduated. Teaching English to children, was supposed to do it a year. After um, six months being there, I was incarcerated and then 14 days in China's penitentiary. So after I was released, deported from the country immediately, I can't, you know what I'm saying, back in America, continued to teach, got into coaching football because I played, you know what I'm saying? I played, of course. I'm a life coach as well, partnered with a nonprofit organization called the UMA Foundation. And we work with um, just you know, the UMA's acronym, Uplifting America's Youth. So we work with education, tutoring, special needs kids as well. We also work with kids that are troubled youth, all in all. You understand? Know have early ages or early signs of drug use and abuse, or just early run ins with the law. And that's where I come into play. And with the life skills and we use my book 14 days of Beijing as a part of our lessons and broadening understanding and perspective of one's current situation and what they went through to be where they are currently and how to better themselves because of it. And all in all, just exposing them to just things that they more than likely have no clue is capable just you know what I'm saying because of where they come from, you know what I mean? So exposure is everything. So it's just you know what I'm saying, just 
I got my hands dipping in a bunch of different things. Yeah, that's right. That's right. With all the McNuggets, baby. That's right. Hands dipped in all of the stuffs. So that's what I'm talking about. At least all the good stuff. So my goodness, man. So first job ever out of college is teaching English abroad, man. So my goodness. So what led you to freaking charter, man? Because folks are like, man, can I just get some in my neighborhood? But my man's like, nah, fam. I'm going thousands of miles away, freaking seven, ten hours ahead of the time zones and really jump in. So what led to that decision, man? I mean, it was just universal. It's where I was supposed to be. Prior to that, I was applying, interviewing, getting flown out, you know what I'm saying, put up in hotels the whole nine for eight months straight, just various positions, various companies. And for eight months, I just kept getting told no. I just kept getting told no. And these all American positions, corporate positions, sales, management, marketing, that whole nine. First job to tell me yes it was on the other side of the world. It was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I, I, I already done graduated. I'm back home. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to find something. Like, something got to, something got to shape. Something got to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't go through everything I went through just to be sitting here looking crazy. So it's like, something got to shape. It ain't like I, I haven't been trying on top of that. So once I was finally told yes, it was like, oh man, so if it's what's about it at this point. So I you know what I'm saying? I, I knew I, I could do the job. I could do I could do the position for sure. I could qualify for it. I applied, got it. I'm like, man, shit, we finna do this. <laughs> That's right, and doing it that you did, man. So my goodness, freaking teaching English overseas, man. So my goodness, did you ever see yourself as a teacher growing up, man? Not at all. Not in the least. <laughs> Not in the <laughs> Especially once I started playing football. And I was still, you know, I was I always had great grades. I was always on honor roll. I was studious. So academics is something that I always took seriously. But Never would I have thought that me I would actually be an instructor, you know what I'm saying, or a teacher. Like that never you couldn't even pay me and say, like, yeah, but I see you teaching now. Yeah, I see you teaching in the future. I'm like, nah, but I can't even imagine that. Can't even imagine that. So ironically, when it happened, it was just like, hey, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? It's a challenge for sure. Challenges don't intimidate me at all so like okay it's time for me to break outside my comfort zone and try something different and at this point in time in my life i have no clue what it is that i want to do or know who i truly am because i played football for so long and i identified as that so now that that's no longer the case you know what I'm saying? i have to re-identify myself so i got to start somewhere so I'm, i just got to start just trying different things and then i'll be able to narrow it down and figure it out a lot faster that way so at just at, at that point in time man, it's just like man oh yeah that's what i'm talking about indeed yeah because it's actually funny how life works sometimes like you grow up you think you're gonna be one thing and then you realize crap this maybe not gonna work out it's like i don't think i'm gonna be going to the nfl but gotta do something here and it's like you know what i'm gonna teach some folks and you ended up teaching the kids right or was it some adults the uh, english overseas in beijing it was, it was kids. I was teaching kids as young as three years old, all the way up to 14. Oh, there you go. Chance loves the kids, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Colet love the kids. Kids love Colet, for sure, for sure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. So, my goodness. So, what are the three major lessons you learned from teaching for that short amount of time that you did overseas, especially folks that had a basically a language barrier to go through. As far as just teaching, just Chinese kids, I learned that kids are kids no matter where you you are in the world. Kids are kids. <laughs> like don't, I thought, you know what I'm saying, these kids are gonna be disciplined, they're gonna be well behaved, structured. Kids are kids no matter where you go. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, that was a perception I had beforehand. Um, that and man, kids are, I mean, but it's kids is just impressionable. 
truly. Yeah, kids are truly impressionable. And we know that, of course, um, you know what I'm saying, amongst, for those that do have their own kids or just be around kids, work with kids, you know that kids are impressionable. impressionable. But to be in a land where you are truly taboo and you can still leave so much of an imprint on this young spirit, it's like, man, like, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're truly, truly impressionable. You know what I'm saying? We can only view it as from one aspect just because of where we're from. But it's like, I done seen both ends of its uh, coin. So it's like, okay, for sure. And lastly, I mean, just being able to leave somewhat of an impact or just uh, play a role in a young spirit's upbringing as far as their development in the long run, it's truly, truly liberating and a great, great feeling. Um, just because I, I knew it growing up, just because those that I do truly appreciate that poured into me and that made me into the man that I am. So to be able to, you know what I'm saying, just reciprocate what was him saying done to me and to the, the next generation, it would be dope. It's just truly, truly a vibe. But yeah, it's truly, truly liberating. Yes, sir, indeed. Yes, sir, indeed. Well, my goodness, man. So that's what I'm talking about, kid. Yeah, you're right. That it's like kids are kids, man. And they impress them too. So it's like, yeah, let me tell them about the time I was a tree. That's right. And then when they realize, oh crap, maybe I was a tree too. It's like, nope. You were not a tree. That was me. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> like hey, just uh, being able to leave a positive impression on the kids, too, as a result. That's yeah. the thing about it, too. It's like, hey, since they're impressionable, it's like take a positive advantage and try to leave something good for them as opposed to the evil folks out there with all the programming that's freaking on hyperdrive now, <laughs> thanks to technology, if no, you're not careful. <laughs> like it's so easy to follow the path so definitely some solid stuff right there so my goodness man so with this title 14 days in a beijing prison man like dude like well, <laughs> any idea what like why is it 14 days man like was it because of the craziness that you had to go through just to be able to get a work visa and to be allowed in the country oh no 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 uh I, I lived in China for six months total. So I was a full resident of China. 14 days pretty much transpires, you know what I'm saying, about my last 14 days in China. So prior to, I, I got into China October 10th, 2018. April 4th, 2019, that's when I was arrested and, you know what I'm saying, locked up, into, locked up in the Chinese penitentiary. And for 14 days. And once I was released, I was immediately deported from the country. So I only did six months total in China. Prior to those last 14 days, it was harmonious, truly an experience of a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? It's everything. Last 14 days, I got to experience the negative aspect of, uh, you know what I'm saying, China. And the book 14 days in beijing that's just is about my last 14 days in china that's right folks y'all better pick up this book if you want to pick up the store because i heard some of the book and past interviews man it's like dude like man like shea butter is usually a good thing but chinese folks like hey we don't believe in shea butter here <laughs> <laughs> Well, them folks, you thought I was speaking German. Them, them <laughs> folks ain't know what I was talking about. They was like, what are, what are you talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Using moisturizer skin. Like, oh, no, y'all don't get it. Okay. So, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> That's right. Goes to the territory. It's like, yep, got to fight off that ash. And this can't be walking around Ash River looking like a desert. Yeah. yeah. And I can't trust y'all products because y'all put bleach in y'all products. So it's like, no, nah, I definitely don't need that. <laughs> I got shea butter me. <laughs> I got to because y'all on a different type of time. It's a different culture here. It's a different world. So, Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So speaking of different cultures, different world, uh, 
I know my man's in big into spirituality, of course, with the astrology and everything, you and being a Sagittarius man. So what got you into spirituality? Was it the upbringing of your parents being Native American or was it just something else? Um, It's really my parents because my mother, they grew up Christian, of course. And my father's side, he was just more of a free spirit and free thinker. Um, and a conscious individual. It was just true balance. So of course, my mother raised me primarily, so we came up Christian, but as time prolonged and especially as I entered college and got a just a higher level of just education and was challenged to think more critically and analytically, I was just, you know what I'm saying? And then being exposed to just new information it was just I never was introduced, never exposed to it at all. Um, it's just it started. That's when the shift began, and from that point moving forward, it just enhanced and just learned more and just became more conscious and under understanding just broadened and you know what I'm saying just became more enlightened and just awakened to what we call reality and you know what I'm saying, all of that. So but you know what I'm saying, of course it all you know what I'm saying, that's just how us natives are though. You know what I mean? It just you know what I'm saying, some of us got tricked and some of us kept our backbone. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we gonna keep it above, you know what I mean? So that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? Some of us got tricked and you know what I'm saying, fell for the lick, some of us kept our backbone and I was just fortunate to have the balance of the two. But you know what I'm saying? Like I say, understanding is everything. So just every day brought in your level of understanding. So you, you know what I'm saying? You have a, a an awareness of everything entirely. So then your judgment will be, you know what I'm saying? It, you can't really have a very, you know what I'm saying? It, it just changed you, just your thinking, how you just look at things and what you deem serious and what you don't and what to feed into and whatnot. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. So with uh, basically the information that you've gained over the years, a new level of understanding, do you feel like that's also helped you to become a better life coach for the kids that you're helping out with the work that you're doing as a life coach for the kids? Yeah, absolutely. Just like exactly what we just sat here and yeah, spoke on, not too, you know what I'm saying, in the previous topic. Just, it yeah, just brought in understanding, like, looking at it, looking at this thing differently, bro. Like, in comparison to what was you just doing, just because you, you know what I'm saying, you just been told to do, and your people have been told to do, and so forth, and so forth. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, Let's look at things from a different angle. Let's be a little bit more open-minded. Let me expose you to different things. So you can now see things, you know what I'm saying? You look at it a little bit more clearly and from a different, you know what I'm saying? Be able to form a, a different opinion just based on just you and your tribe and just the understanding you've gained based on upon the awakening that's, you know what I'm saying? Then, then overcame you, you know what I mean? So it's just like, you just stepping into you truly and now with that being said you have a better understanding of your purpose in life and what you need to do to fulfill it and that's you know what I'm saying that's it what happened this is what happened to me you know what I'm saying getting locked up in you know what I'm saying for 14 days in Beijing so here I am <laughs> you know what I'm saying it took everything football it took all of that yes indeed yes indeed well, since this man is basically a, uh, getting to prolific writer status with this book, the whole 14 days in the Beijing penitentiary, and of course the romance novel, talking about you and your ex, is there any other genres you plan on tackling in the future? Man, I honestly have no clue. After I wrote 14 days, I was, I was like, man, this is the only book I'm going to write. This is it for me. <laughs> I, really, I, was, I was hung up off of that so <laughs> as time progressed and you know what I'm saying, I just came I really just I just came across a, a statistic that said romance is number one selling genre at all genres 
And I was already posed the idea of writing about that. But I just wasn't into it. But once I saw that statistic, I was like, oh, yeah. It's no if, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> At this point, let, yeah, let, let's do it. Y'all, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, yeah, let's do it. For sure. So I honestly have no clue. Moving forward, I honestly have no clue. You couldn't have told me five years ago, two years ago, three years. You know, so you can tell me at no point in time, like, yeah, bro, you've been author. You couldn't tell me. You couldn't have told me that. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't tell me that, oh, yeah, you're writing romance now. You couldn't have told me that either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I have no clue. I'm just that type of individual that I always, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never opposed to trying anything. You know what I'm saying? As long as I see it beneficial, I ain't opposed to trying nothing. For sure. Everything I am currently is because somebody was like, yeah, you should try this. So, you know what I'm saying? Just post the idea. I'm like, oh, I could. Yeah, and I see it beneficial. And it's like, shit, it just worked out. So, yeah, bro. It's just like, man, I don't have no clue. Moving forward, only time will tell. Uh, there you go. My man might make a comic book one day, maybe. Who knows? Oh, yeah. I plan on doing a, uh, I want to do a comic book in 14 days. That'd be even, I'm like, that'd be hard to have a comic book in 14 days. Vision. That'd be too hard. So that's just, it's already, you know what I'm saying, one of, a, a goal of mine to, you know what I'm saying, make happen for sure and manifest. There you go. They can animate the scene where you have to turn Super Saiyan to break up the fight, right? All of that, y'all want to do an anime? All of that, no, for sure. Like, you did hit me, you on the same wavelength. <laughs> like, <for sure. laughs> I want to do all of that for sure, just because it's setting all, all that. I, I just be hard. I can't think of too many people, you know what I'm saying, that's doing that. So, it's like, especially from where I'm from, so I'm like, yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to do all of it. There you go, there you go with some talking about right there man he's got them big plans for a big future bigger than freaking 10 bowls of oatmeal that's what i'm talking about oh, that's man. right indeed oh, yes that's right indeed some say it's a snack now nah, that's a whole freaking meal for a whole country y'all that's right thicker than 10 bowls of oatmeal yes indeed yes indeed well coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive and for you, since you're <laughs> actually too close to the 25, we'll just make it a little easier for you. So if you wake up tomorrow and you're 18 again, but this time in the current year with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? At 18, to journal more. Like, yeah, journal your experiences and your thoughts. Whatever you choose to do, go 110, give it give it give it everything. Yeah, you know I mean, even though you're good at a lot, you know what I'm saying? You gotta find one. It it, it still be hard, but just whatever is the, the primary mission or focus at this point in the time of the journey, allow it to just be that. And then when it's time to move on to the next, just know you're gonna be great, bro. You're gonna be a mogul. And legendary for sure. You know what I'm saying? Just trust the process, stay down, keep running the marathon. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get to the victory lap. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Untouchable Style, baby. That's right. That's right. Going to be legendary. Going to take the victory lap, baby. That's right. That's right, indeed. That's right. Because the marathon will always continue, indeed, baby. That's right. RP Nip, you also. That's right, the legend himself, baby. Taking out way too soon, damn it. Way too soon. Sickening. <laughs> Sickening. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, my goodness. Well, my man's got all this wonderful work out there that he's going to be continuing to produce because he has a big future ahead of him, indeed. So for those who want to snag a copy or 55 of this wonderful book, heck, even all your books and tell others about it, what's the best way for doing that and keeping up with what you're doing, my man. Yeah, Amazon for sure. All my books will be available on Amazon. Just honestly, all I got to do is just Google me, Google Chancellor K. Jackson or Google 14 Days of Beijing. That'll pull you up to the link, the Amazon link. And from there, you'll still be able to find my specific author page and 
see the rest of my work. So you know say all you gotta do is just Google me. It's very simple, not too hard. And as far as other social media platforms, Google Chess, just you know what I'm saying, just Google my name. I still pop up for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm saying it won't be hard. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's right. It ain't gonna be hard, it's gonna be soft, y'all. That's right, it's gonna be easy to find, y'all. This man You're hilarious, man. You're hilarious. <laughs> Oh man. Well, there you have it, folks. That's right. Check out my man CKJ, baby, aka CJ for Georgia, baby. That's right. Land of the peaches and land of the power, baby. Because a man's got all sorts of power cooking up in there, man. That's right. The 14 days in Beijing, baby. Check it out. Like 15 library books, snacks, and copies. Tell your friends about it. Tell your cat about it. Tell your penguin. Heck, even tell an ice cream cake about it. Indeed, so that way more folks can catch some of the goodness my man says cranking out. Indeed, so any parting words before we close up shop, my man? Yeah, man, I just like to say, um, appreciate everybody that stayed tuned for the whole interview and hope you gain something from it truly. And to, I mean, know that you know, set goals and you know what I'm saying, accomplish them. I mean, like, the sky's the limit. Anything you want to do, it's feasible. It's, it's truly up to you. And, you know what I'm saying, they say every person is defined by their reaction to any given such situation. And it's like, who would you want to define you? Who would you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? So, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is you choose to do, you know what I'm saying, just give it your heart and give it your all in. You know what I'm saying? Stay strong, and It's going to be a marathon for sure. It ain't going to happen overnight, but stay 10 toes down. It's going to be as big as you want to make it, and we'll go as far as you want to take it. Let's trust the process and blessings and balance upon all of y'all. How's it going, you super special, awesome human? Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. Heck, even shoot myself or the guest an email and let them know what you liked most about this interview so that way they can stay inspired to keep pushing out great work.